Welcome to the Lazy Forager, and today we're going to be talking about sumac. So I'll put some links uh, below as to how to harvest it and what to look for, um, a few other additional important information about that. But sumac is a native uh, species to uh, Ontario, in my region, eastern Ontario, and it grows very aggressively, quite frankly. Um, in some cases, you have to remove it, it becomes a problem. And it's a male and a female uh, shrub, actually, but it can be almost as tall as some trees, and it produces these beautiful big seed heads. And all of these tiny little um, berries on them have these tiny little hairs. You can see a little bit there. And oops. <laughs> so a lot of the flavor is sort of packed into those hairs and into the sort of seed or of the berry. That's, uh, that's inside. So that's how you know when they're ready is when you take a little bite of the berry and if it tastes tart, it's ready to go. But we're just going to continue uh, talking about processing it today. So there's a couple of different ways you can use this. You can dry them completely and grind it into a spice. Um, I haven't done that before, so if you wanted to do that, you may want to, uh, may need to find it, you know, you definitely will need to find another resource. Um, so I normally just use it as a substitute for lemonade, and it really does taste lemony. So this was a batch that I made a bit earlier in the year in July when it, the berries were not as ripe as they are now, so it's a little lighter in color. I've made uh, sumac juice in previous years where it's almost blood red. It's almost the color of this or even this. Uh, again, I'll put some links in the description below where you can actually see some photographs of some things that I've made. So because it tastes lemony and because you can make this lovely juice out of it, you, it's, it's a substitute for anywhere you would use a lemon. You can make it into a simple syrup for cocktails. Um, you can boil it down. Um, you know, with sugar for a jelly, uh, a sumac meringue pie, I've made that out of it. But generally speaking, I just love drinking it. It's got a huge vitamin C pack, and because it's a native species, it's a native species of vitamin C. I don't have to rely on citrus fruits uh, in the wintertime if I make, you know, enough of this. And you can still harvest this sometimes right through to November and even into December, depending on the conditions. So I've gotten once again off topic, which I'm known to do, and back to processing. So if you've uh, got little kids in your household after you get your heads home um, and you want to get the berries off, uh, if you're going to use a particular method. So if you're going to be using a blender, you want to get the berries off the heads as many as you can, because you don't want to be putting these big stems into your blender that can wreck your blade. So the easiest way to do it, I found, and sort of the most fun, and why I said if you have kids at home, they will probably enjoy this, is to do this. And you just kind of rub them together, and you see them all sort of falling down below. So you do it over a big bowl or a big piece of paper, or a clean tea towel, or anything like that, and I'm sure that, you know, they're going to be chucking them. And you'll find them around your house, I'm sure. Um, but it is fun, and they kind of stain your fingers. They have a sort of... Um, it's not a waxy feel. It's um, it's a it's a velvety feel, the same as as their uh, as their branches. It's how you, one of the identifiers of staghorn sumac is the feel of the branches tastes or tastes. It feels uh, like velvet, um, similar to the the velvet on a stag's horn. Okay, so I'm not using the blender method. So I'm using the jug method. So what I would do is I'm literally just going to pop the whole head in. And I picked about one, two, three, four, five. So those are good size heads, five heads. And then I've got all of these, so I'm going to chuck those in two. Ah! As I said, it gets a little messy, but you know, life's messy. If it were clean and sterile all the time, we wouldn't have cheese. We wouldn't have beer. Okay, so clean up some of these and chuck them in because waste not, want not. Now what I could do is I could use this as my starter juice and pop it in there, but I'm not going to because I actually want to drink this stuff. So all you need to do is 
fill up your jug with some water. Cold tap water is absolutely fine. So remember, you can't clean this. Uh, you need a very, very clean source away from roads, um, away from, you know, common pollutants, or, you know, if it's been grown in land uh, that has pesticide. So this is a pretty big jug, and because I didn't use very many heads, I'm only going to fill it up this way. It's, uh, yeah, this is an almost three liter jug, so I'm only filling it to about halfway. Then I'm going to get the lid, pop that on, make sure it's secure, and then shake, 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 shake. So you can already start to see some of the colors coming out of it from it. Now you're going to whack this in the fridge for at least a day. I find the longer you leave it, the better the flavor. Um, but don't leave it more than about a week. Then uh, when you strain it out, you're going to want to use something like a cheesecloth, like I've got here. Um, definitely a cheesecloth is probably your friend at this point. A strainer will still allow some of those little hairs to get through. So. Um, yeah, that's all there is to sumac juice. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.